one four is now at six. The Washington Court of Appeals says the sentencing for the Freeman High School shooter needs to be changed. We explain why, plus the school district's reaction. I'm tracking showers in your first alert forecast. I'll let you know where the rain is headed next. Let's tell you about a cold night tonight. Because she had, you know, well over $350,000, and that's all gone. We have cases. Answering a simple text message can lead to you losing your life savings. The signs to look out for to make sure you don't become a victim. You're watching 4 News Now at 6. The Freeman High School shooter will have to be resentenced. Washington. Caleb Sharp was 15 when he brought a gun to Freeman High School and opened fire, killing one classmate and hurting three others. We're glad you're with us tonight. She's Kirsten O'Connor. I'm Derek Dice. In 2022, Sharp was sentenced to 40 years in prison, a sentence the Court of Appeals says is unconstitutional due to his age at the time the crime was committed. Marissa Rio has the details. Appeals opinion. Sharp pleaded guilty to aggravated first degree murder, three counts of attempted first degree murder, and one count of second degree assault against 48 victims. He has now appealed his sentence on several grounds. First, he cited a former statute that requires an exact sentence of only 25 years to life for defendants who are under the age of 16 at the time they commit the crime. This would mean the court violated this statute when imposing a 40 year to life sentence. And in the Court of Appeals opinion, the justices wrote that they agree. The 25-year sentence was the maximum Sharp could receive due to his age. This is all happening nearly seven years after the Freeman School District community was devastated from this tragedy. And now, these memories are being resurfaced. In a statement, the school district said in part, they are disappointed in today's announcement that the Washington State Court of Appeals has ordered the resentencing of Caleb Sharp. In 2020, in 2022, a Superior Court judge heard from victims and experts for six months before imposing the 40-year sentence, and now the victims will have to relive that experience. In their statement, the school district said in part, it's heartbreaking that the Freeman students, staff, families, and community will be exposed to yet another conversation about this situation. We will continue providing support and services to Freeman students, staff, and families as we navigate our continuing road of recovery. Court documents reveal that Sharp is also arguing that the firearms enhancement applied to his sentence cannot be applied if the crime was committed when the defendant is under the age of 16. The court did not have an opinion on this, but said it should be addressed when Sharp is resentenced. As for his confession, Sharp said it should not have been considered during sentencing since it was done so involuntarily. But the court wrote in its opinion that we hold that Sharp waived his right to challenge his confession when he pleaded guilty. Guilty. Now a resentencing date has not yet been scheduled. We will continue to update you with any new information as soon as it becomes available. In studio tonight, Marissa Rio, 4 News Now. Well, the excessive force case involving a Spokane County Sheriff's deputy is now being handled by the Yakima County prosecutor. We do want to warn you, we are going to show body camera footage from the incident and it may be difficult to watch. This all started when Kevin Hinton parked his car at a park in Spokane Valley back in August. He was there to get some sleep during a long road trip, and that is when Deputy Sergeant Clay Hilton confronted Hinton. According to a police report, the two went back and forth when Sergeant Hilton tried to pull Hinton out of the car. On the ground! Jesus Christ! You're under arrest. Get on the ground! Now, the report claims Hinton tried to resist being detained and Hilton punched him in the face. According to Hinton's lawyers, they say he suffered broken ribs, a punctured lung, and several cuts and bruises. Earlier this year, the Spokane Police Department recommended Hilton be charged with second-degree assault. Following SPD's recommendation, it was up to the Spokane County prosecutor to pursue the charges. We reached out to the prosecutor's office for comment on moving the case to Yakima County, but as of right now, we have not heard back. All right, summer is still a few months away, but the Washington Department of Ecology has already declared a drought emergency for most of the state. If you look at this map on your screen, you can see the only areas that are not included in the emergency are places like Seattle, Tacoma, and Everett. According to the Department of Ecology, winter was exceptionally dry and chances of significant improvement to the snowpack are diminishing. The department says there is not enough water in the mountains, snow, and reservoirs to prevent serious impacts with warmer months ahead.
And speaking of those warmer temperatures that we will see, let's send it over to Chief Meteorologist Chris Crocker, who is now tracking some scattered showers. Yes, we have been watching our sky cam today, looking over the Spokane Veterans Memorial Arena at the showers south and west of town, where it's really been coming down. We've only had a few sprinkles here at 500 West Boone Avenue. Here's the view from our Doppler radar of that activity that we've been seeing along I-90 from Medical Lake up through the uh, Fairchild Air Force Base and just barely brushing Spokane. Most of the heavier precipitation has been well south and west of town. Meanwhile, a broader view on our radar. We're going to start to see these showers tapering off as we get into the evening. It'll take a little while before we're completely dry, but they're going to be coming quite more a bit more hit and miss uh, later tonight. Our winds are starting to die down right now. We have winds only at three miles per hour out at the airport. It's still breezy in Spokane Valley, uh, but the stronger gusts of this afternoon are starting to taper off and it will be a calmer day tomorrow. It's going to be a cold start to the day. We'll be down below freezing tomorrow morning, heading up to a high of 54, just a little below average with the possibility of some spotty showers again tomorrow afternoon. We do have a warming trend in our forecast, but uh, you won't need to break out the warm weather gear just yet. It's not especially impressive. I'll tell you all about it in just a few minutes. All right, Chris, thank you. Well, the woman is now being held on over a million dollars bond after being accused of running down a man who has faced child porn charges in recent years. Spokane police say someone spotted 70 year old Gerald Fox's body on the side of the road near West Sunset Frontage Road and South Grove Road on April 9th. Not long after he was found, police got a call about someone dangerously driving down Highway 2 in Airway Heights. As detectives worked the crime scene, Lincoln County deputies got reports of the same truck with the driver possibly impaired. After a short chase, 27-year-old Alyssa Bray was arrested. Detectives say they've discovered she'd been walking along Sunset Highway when she accepted a ride from Fox. They say she took his truck and intentionally ran him down before taking off. Bray was booked for murder and also faces charges like third-degree theft and trespassing. Two years ago, Fox was arrested on child porn charges, and at the time, deputies asked the public to come forward with any outstanding victims. Well, hundreds of workers at Providence Sacred Heart Medical Center are set to begin a strike on Monday. They're fighting for what they say are fair wages for the work they're expected to do. This strike comes after the union and hospital management were unable to come to an agreement on a new contract after months of negotiations. Hunter Bertram is continuing our coverage tonight, and he reveals the possible pay the hospital is offering workers to cross the picket line. Yeah, last week, Sacred Heart told me that despite the nearly 500 workers set to go on strike, our community can expect the same care and services without interruption. Now, they say that uh, we, I looked into those numbers to find out what's going on, and the union told me it's shocking. As you scroll down this list, each blue job title marks a position Sacred Heart needs to fill during the strike. You can find it on the United States Nursing website, a company that's for more than 30 years aided in filling the gaps when labor disputes hit. In an email sent to us from a member of the website, it showed proposed pay suggested hourly work from $70 an hour to $145, depending upon position. But it all comes down to they have to appreciate their employees and they're not doing that right now. I reached out to Sacred Heart asking about these numbers. They said we should refer to their statement they sent to us last week. There was no mention of pay for temporary workers in that statement. When I talked to the union, they told me these pay ranges are double, if not triple, the salaries of current workers, citing you could work at Sacred Heart for decades and not even scratch the hourly pay offered to replacement workers, saying it's insulting. Providence's strike, I think, is, I hate to say it, but I think it's for the good because the way that it's being ran, clearly it trickles down from the top. You know, something has to change up there in order for it to change down below. Right. Change that patients like Cassandra and union workers are hoping to see soon.
Yeah, on Wednesday, both the Union and Sacred Heart are expected to answer our questions on what's next for the community and their medical care. You can watch our coverage and follow it online at KXLY.com. Reporting live in Spokane, Hunter Bertram, 4 News Now. The Department of Justice is planning on suing the owners of Ticketmaster. Coming up, how Taylor Swift may have inspired this potential lawsuit. The Holy Names Music Center right behind me has been a home for many musicians in Spokane for decades. Now the organization is looking for a new spot to move. Coming up, how you can help save the center. They can't close the school without, you know, having somewhat of a say or hearing the other side of the story. A push to save Bora Elementary in Coeur d'Alene. Why the school district is considering shutting it down next on 4 News Now at 6. Download the KXLY Plus app on your connected TV. Save your green! Time to grab the broom and sweep out the old. It's spring cleaning time at Wendell Ford. Help us say goodbye to all the remaining 2023 Fords and hello to this year's best deals. The 23 F-150, 1.9% financing for 72 months. The 23 Mach-E, 0% financing for 72 months. The 23 Ford Escape, plug-in hybrid, 0% financing for 66 months. Hurry in today for these spring cleaning deals before they're swept away. Wendell Ford at the Y on North Division. When I was told I had a brain tumor, my life disappeared in a moment. I feared for my future, but even more, I feared for the ones I love. How would they move on without me? But when my doctor told me about the Gamma Knife of Spokane, everything changed. I can get my brain tumor treated in just one day and continue living the life I love. Because of Gamma Knife, I have hope. It's the place we start every day, where we prep, primp, and relax on the weekends. At Northwest Granite, we understand your bathroom is the second most used room in your home, which is why we help you pick out the perfect cabinets, tile backsplash, and countertops to make your bathroom beautiful. At Northwest Granite, we help you design it, we build them, and we will install it so you can enjoy it. Nice work. You take card? Can I get a check? Sure. Let me go find one. Thanks. Check behind the VCR. Can I be frank? You're cutting off potential clients by not offering card payments. That's like only watching one chain. That's fine. World War II channel. One type of music. Postmodern polka. One chain. Don't be a hater. Try our mobile card reader. Oh, good. You do take it. Welcome to the future. All right, let's power up. Nice. Two hands. Ten and two. STCU Business. The Tire Store for auto repairs, tires, and wheels. At the Tire Store, they'll let you split up your repair bill over a couple months. Get your car fixed today. ASC certified, and you can start an account with no credit check. Tire Store. Devastated. Um, angry. Um, heartbroken. That's how Coeur d'Alene families say they are reacting after learning that Bora Elementary could close at the end of this school year. Closing the school could save the district a million dollars. The Coeur d'Alene School District currently faces a six million dollar budget deficit due to lower enrollment, inflation, and the state moving to an attendance-based funding model. But families with kids at Bora are hoping for other cost-cutting methods. Bronte Sarasky shares how families are reacting. Bora Elementary School families tell me that they are heartbroken knowing that their kid's school could close. Last year, we were kind of facing the same dilemma, and now we're back here again. After the Coeur d'Alene School District's levy passed last year, many families thought they were in the clear. That was until the district announced it still faced a $6 million budget shortfall. Yeah, it's a little frustrating. The district is looking to make major cuts, including possibly closing Bora Elementary and using the space for the district's early learning center. The school has some of the smallest enrollment in the district with just under 300 students. We are 
proposing that that's the one, even though it's a really difficult decision. Students and parents at the elementary school are crushed. Like sad, mad. I'm, I'm like scribbled with emotions. To them, it's not just a school. But it's really closing down almost like a community center. But that would only solve one million of the district's six million dollar budget problem. It's also looking at reducing staff, cutting the district's advanced learning program, and moving to either a four-day school week or a 160-day school year. The school board is expected to vote on whether to close Bora in addition to other changes on April 29th. In the meantime, Time, parents and students say they won't stay quiet. They can't close the school without having somewhat of a say or hearing the other side of the story. Reporting in Coeur d'Alene, Bronte Sorotsky, 4 News Now. It's a chilly day compared to where we have been in recent days. 52 for a high, 57 is our average high. We started the day off at 38. There are much cooler nights ahead. I'll let you know what to expect after the break. Live stream KXLY Plus on the 4 News Now app. 4 News Now is brought to you by Parker Subaru. 38 specials, timeless Southern Rock Hits, live at Coeur d'Alene Casino, Thursday, April 18th. Get your tickets now for one of rock and roll's biggest all-time bands. The is just the beginning. Tomorrow, a shark is here with real money advice for you. How can you fight back against inflation and make your dollars go further? Watch GMA. Plus, look better, love better, feel better. See how 50's the new 20. Tomorrow on Good Morning America. Hi, I'm Dr. Jeffrey Lyman. I'm an orthopedic surgeon and my entire practice is dedicated to taking care of patients with knee problems. From ACL and meniscus tears to total knee replacements, I want to make sure you're ready for life's adventures. I'm here to help you master your knee pain and regain your active lifestyle. Visit me at the Orthopedic Sports Institute's new state-of-the-art surgery center in Hayden. Ready to take the first step? Call for a consultation today and let me help guide you to a pain-free future. Call or click today and set up your consultation with Orthopedic Sports Institute. You're feeding it. I will, I promise. <sighs> Thanks to our Premier Rewards Visa credit card from ICCU, we earned enough cash back to stock up on puppy supplies. But we don't have a puppy. They're very convincing children. <laughs> I'm a little over my head here. We can certainly take care of that for you. When you're looking for a company that's noteworthy, look no further. Call your friends at Mainstream Electric Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing and spend your time doing more important things. Damn straight. Scotty McCreary is spreading his fresh take throwback country to Coeur d'Alene Casino Thursday, May 2nd. Get your tickets now for one of country music's biggest stars. Winning is just the beginning. Idaho's Circling Raven Golf Course opens for the season this Thursday. Just a half an hour south of downtown Coeur d'Alene, the club is opening its 20th season with a $10,000 donation to Inland Northwest Honor Flight. Oh, it looks gorgeous. Uh -huh. Derek, we were just talking about the best golf courses, and Chris weighed in as well. I haven't done any of them. It's up there for sure. Oh my it, uh, most gosh. people would tell you it's one of their favorites in the area. Absolutely. It's interesting it's how small heck, though, those too. bunkers <laughs> look from <laughs> the aerial view when yeah. you're when you're hitting out of them. They're <laughs> much larger. Well, Today might be a good day to just dream about golf because it has been cool and breezy. And I tell you, this downtown sky cam just looks more and more dramatic as we uh, go through the evening. A little bit of sun and then these dark, dark skies to the south and west where we have had some shower activity. Here's a look at our radar. And actually, things have been lightening up a little bit, but we still have rain along the I-90 corridor into Liberty Lake, some light rain around uh, Coeur d'Alene. The heavier precipitation has been just south and west of Spokane, and that's where we uh, continue to find it. 
Here are four things to know about your weather. We have some showers this evening. They will be tapering off later tonight. We're already starting to see them lose some of their steam. We have a chance of rain on Wednesday. Similar timing, but not as widespread. It will be much more hit and miss and light. We have some very cold nights ahead, and then we are going to be warmer by the weekend, especially overnight. Here's a look at our nighttime temperature trend over the next four nights below freezing. Uh, for the next couple right at freezing. Uh, this white line right here is our average overnight low, which is in the upper 30s, but we are going to be well below. Uh, in fact, here's a look at the overnight lows tonight around the region. Look at all the 20s, including Deer Park. Mead, only 28 degrees, 28 in Spirit Lake, and 29 in Cheney and Spangle. It would be tough for a pansy or a petunia petunia or a geranium uh, to survive temperatures like this. So if you have got some of those pretty baskets or maybe some uh, flowers already in the ground, either bring them into the garage or cover them up because we are going to be down below freezing over much of the region tonight and for the next several nights. Lewiston, one of the exceptions, Moses Lake and OMAC also staying above freezing. But really anytime you're getting below about 36 degrees, you want to take care of those plans. High temperatures tomorrow will be running a little bit below average in the 50s in Spokane and Coeur d'Alene, 60 in Grand Coulee and 60 in OMAC. Meanwhile, talking about precipitation, here's a look at our forecast radar. We will be drying out later tonight and clearing out. That's going to help those temperatures drop, especially as the winds die down, which they already are. Here's 7 o'clock Wednesday morning with a little bit of snow in parts of western Montana. Might even see some light snow at Lookout Pass. And then as we get into the afternoon, we'll start to see that afternoon convection again. 3 o'clock, the potential for a few hit and miss showers around Spokane and Coeur d'Alene up into the central pan or the northern panhandle. And then we'll see that taper off again tomorrow evening. Your planning forecast, 20% chance of measurable precipitation tomorrow. And then we're into the sunshine for Thursday and a breezy Friday, 56 Another gorgeous weekend, 15 degrees or more cooler than last weekend, but it's still going to be beautiful. Earth Day is on Monday and a lot of great Earth Day activities going on this weekend. The weather should be perfect to get out and you can plant a tree or clean up the park or whatever uh, way you want to celebrate Earth Day. The weather should cooperate. Well, Spokane's historical music center is now looking for a new home. For over four decades, Holy Names Music Center has impacted generations of musicians and artists in Spokane. But it says the end of its lease means it's not sustainable to stay in the long term. So now the music center is asking for your help to continue its legacy. Peter Choi has the story. In a hallway inside the historical building, follow music that takes you back in time to 1867. For over 20 years, Project Joy Orchestra conductor it's easy to make that. It's a little bit has wow. called yeah. Holy Names Music Center a home. Uh, Holy Names Music Center is really the lifeblood of musicians in town. Where students and teachers found music inside themselves. For 33 years, the lease has been a dollar a year. That lease now expired. The center says it has to pay $46,000 this year and nearly $100,000 after two years. The executive director says it's now time to find a new permanent home. We're looking for the first, um, a solution to secure the future mm -hmm. of, of the Holy Names Music Centre. You know, we can do that year and year mm -hmm. after year after mm -hmm. year, but it's not a permanent lasting solution. Mm -hmm. And so we want to find a home, a new home. Uh, very worried, very concerned for the future of their organization, but also for the students that are impacted, the teachers that are impacted. The centre says it needs your help holding fundraising concert Back to Future next Saturday at 7 p.m.
Contact the center if you know any available sites. Nobody goes a day without music, whatever that means to them. But music is part of who you are, whether you realize it or not. In Spokane, Peter Choi, for Hmm, I hope they find a new home. Well, concerns over a rise of crypto scams across the United States coming up. Why one local detective says there isn't much law enforcement can do to help victims get their money back. Live stream KXLY Plus on the 4 News Now app. So what do you think about these? We're going to take everything from out. design and products to removal and installation. Rebath is with you through every step of your remodel. Call us or visit Rebath.com and save $1,500 off your complete bathroom remodel. Hello, I'm Mark Peterson. It's that time of year again when Washington Trust Bank helps you dispose of your sensitive documents and protect your identity with four easy steps. First, drive to one of their six participating drive through locations. Second, fill your seal and shred bag with the documents that you want to destroy. Third, secure the seal and shred bag. Then drop off your bag at Debris where they will destroy your documents in their secure space. Shred Day is Friday, April 19th. Pick up your shred and seal bag at one of their six locations while supplies last. My name is Connie and I have stage 3 breast cancer. I'm an RN and I've been working for several years in the profession, so I decided that I wanted to seek out a second opinion. I think getting a second opinion is vitally important. I went to Summit Cancer. Everybody in the facility treats me like I am the only one they're looking after. I would highly recommend Summit Cancer Centers. Montana Sapphire from Phillipsburg, Montana. Join STCU Best of Broadway for classic comedies, family favorites, and blockbuster hits live at First Interstate Center for the Arts. Season tickets include Stephen Sondheim's smash hit musical comedy, Company, Funny Girl, the hit Broadway show with one of the greatest musical scores of all time, hilarious fan favorite, Beetlejuice, feel-good celebration, Mamma Mia, and the multi-Tony award-winning new musical, MJ. Order season tickets to reserve your seats now at BroadwaySpokane.com. So what do you think about these? We're going to take everything From out. design and products to removal and installation, Rebath is with you through every step of your remodel. Call us or visit Rebath.com and save $1,500 off your complete bathroom remodel. 4 News Now is brought to you by Aligned Family Chiropractic. Welcome back. Concert ticket selling giant Live Nation, which owns Ticketmaster, could face a major antitrust lawsuit from the Department of Justice. The Wall Street Journal reports the lawsuit will allege that it undermined competition for ticketing live events. The two companies merged in 2010 despite concerns about a potential monopoly. As post-pandemic concerts boomed, Taylor Swift fans had bad blood. Hundreds took the company to court for its botched rollout for tickets to the Eras Tour, claiming fraud and price fixing. The tickets are so overpriced that the average person isn't going to be able to go anymore. Live Nation blamed scalpers and bots pretending to be human customers, insisting it does not set or control ticket prices outside of its service fee. The meltdown made it nearly impossible for some to get tickets, inspiring lawmakers in the Capitol to investigate. The lawsuit is expected in the coming weeks. But Live Nation's legal troubles don't end there. The families of the two women who were killed during a mass shooting last year at the Gorge are also suing the company. The families of Brandy Escamilla and Jocelyn Ruiz claim Live Nation failed to enforce drug and weapons policies during the Beyond Wonderland Music Festival. According to documents, the two women were shot by that man, James Kelly. Investigators say Kelly began shooting because he thought the world was ending after eating hallucinogenic mushrooms. The lawsuit aims to hold Live Nation and other named parties accountable for the security oversight. Well, coming up on 4 News Now at 6.30 in a special report. Local people losing their life savings in cryptocurrency scams, how they're being sucked in by scammers, and how you can spot the red flags to keep you from losing your money after the break.
live stream KXLY Plus on the 4 News Now app. You work hard for your money, and now you can get money back on state taxes you already paid with the Washington State Working Families Tax Credit. Visit workingfamiliescredit.wa.gov. Considering a new air conditioner? Before you commit, call Bill's Heating and AC. We're elevating efficiency and savings by matching heat pump prices to any local air conditioner quotes and setting a new standard for comfort. Why heat pumps? Similar to ACs, they offer high efficiencies to heat and cool your home for a lower cost. And with the purchase of qualifying equipment, you may be eligible to receive a 25C tax credit of up to $3,200. Don't miss out. Call Bill's Heating and AC for your free quote now. They say there's nothing quite like the open road. I say there's nothing quite like the open road when you're driving a new Toyota from Finley. And right now is the perfect time to trade up to a new RAV4, Toyota Camry, Corolla, or maybe a Tacoma or Tundra truck. Plus, Finley Downtown Toyota has the financing you need to get you behind the wheel today so you can start your driving adventures tomorrow. Finley Toyota's Downtown. There it is. That feeling you get when you can do more with less asthma. It starts with Dupixent. Dupixent is not for sudden breathing problems. It's an add-on treatment for specific types of moderate to severe asthma and can help improve lung function for better breathing in as little as two weeks. Dupixent helps prevent asthma attacks and can even reduce or eliminate oral steroids. Can you picture it? Dupixent can cause allergic reactions that can be severe. Get help right away if you have rash, chest pain, worsening shortness of breath, tingling, or numbness in your limbs. Tell your doctor about newer worsening joint aches and pain or a parasitic infection. Don't change or stop asthma medicines, including steroids, without talking to your doctor. Who knows what you can do when you do more with less asthma? Ask your doctor about Dupixent, the most prescribed biologic for asthma. Welcome to Move Fitness. Let's go. Let's go. Ah, let's go. Sign up now with no enrollment fee. Let's go. Live from downtown Spokane, this is 4 News Now at 6.30. They're designed to, to steal money from you, so they've gotten very good at that. Well, they start with a random message or email, but they often have sinister motives. Cryptocurrency scams have become so common, Americans are losing $6 billion to them nationwide. But one detective with the Spokane Police Department is on a mission to help you spot these scams and avoid becoming the next victim so you don't lose your life savings like so many others already have. Who here has gotten a phone call, an email, a text message from someone you don't know pretending either to know you or that you owe them money or that you got a package that's waiting for just about everybody, right? Detective Tim Schwering spends a lot of time doing presentations just like this one at Affinity Senior Living on the South Hill, educating people on the prevalence of cryptocurrency scams. We're trying to reach everybody. So we've talked to, you know, Rotary groups. Uh, if there's a Spokane Knitting Club, I'll talk to them. These scams might start as a text message from a stranger, a message on a dating site, or an email claiming to be from Amazon or another company. What they're looking for is a response. So you, as nice people, will say, sorry, you have the wrong number. That's the, that all, first off confirms that there's a real person at the end of that phone number for them, for the scammers. But second, then that gives them the opportunity to respond to that. And Detective Schwering says these scammers are willing to play the long game. I've had cases go on for months. I've had a case or two go on for a year where they're building this online relationship uh, before the scam actually happens. After building a relationship over time and creating a story like needing money to pay for a surgery, the scammers will ask you to send them cryptocurrency, whether from your computer or a Bitcoin ATM machine. Now, surprisingly, these Bitcoin ATMs are all over town. They allow you to purchase Bitcoin, then transfer it to someone's digital wallet. And here's the thing. That crypto is likely being sent to countries that won't work with U.S. law enforcement. We can't, you know, seize that account. We can't charge anybody. We can't arrest anybody. It's gone. 
And it's happening at a rate you wouldn't believe. Detective Schwering says one woman in Spokane lost her entire life savings through a crypto scam. Because she had, you know, well over $350,000 and that's all gone. But we have cases, again, $250,000, $500,000, people losing their life savings to these types of scams. The presentation was definitely an eye-opener for the residents at Affinity. I was shocked. I didn't realize it was so widespread. I didn't realize that it was so big of a thing. I thought it was, you know, a couple, $2,500, $5,000. I didn't realize $6 billion. That's a lot of money. But now they're better educated on how to spot these scams in the first place. I get uh, an email every month from a popular dating site saying that I've been matched with somebody and I've never registered with a dating site. So I know that's a scam to start with. And if you pay attention to be aware, it helps you to not get sucked in. So what are the red flags you should look out for? Any requests for personal information or money? A call to action, like installing an app, clicking on a link, or downloading an attachment? Urgency. Or if it's coming from someone you don't know. If you think you're being scammed, don't keep it to yourself, even if you feel embarrassed. These types of scams work best in secrecy uh, because if you start talking to your neighbor or your friend and you're saying these types of things are going on, your friend's more than likely going to be saying, I don't think the U.S. Marshals uh, are going to be executing a search warrant on a retirement home to arrest you. And if you've lost money, let law enforcement know about it and stay away from anything asking you for crypto. That's my big red flag. I'm not going to do anything with bit currency. <laughs> And I really think that last point by Detective Schwering is so important. These things thrive in secrecy, yes. right? So if you think something's fishy, talk to someone. Call police. Call that company that's claiming mm. that uh, you owe them money or whatever. And pretty soon you're going to figure out this is probably a scam. A lot of people think scam and they associate it with, I know you mentioned a, a relationship or romance scams. Yeah. And that can sometimes make you embarrassed. Right. It's so important to not feel embarrassed. We all get these phone calls. We all get these emails. And it's not just happening to senior citizens either. He says they've seen plenty of people in their 20s and 30s falling for these types of things too. That's right. Six billion dollars. All right. Thanks, Derek. Mm -hmm. Let's send it over now to Chief Meteorologist Chris Crocker with your first alert forecast. Well, it has been a moody sky here in downtown Spokane today. We actually have a few sprinkles in progress at the station. It's hard to see with the sun sun in the background, some dark clouds off to the south, but a lot of weather going on. Here are four things to know about your weather. Some showers this evening and then a chance of a repeat tomorrow afternoon and evening to a lesser extent. We have some frosty nights ahead. It is going to be warmer by the weekend. Here's a look at our Doppler radar right now over the past few hours showing those showers in progress. No lightning strikes. You may have encountered a little bit of snow mixing win with the rain in some locations. Let's zoom in around the Spokane and Coeur d'Alene area and you can see some of the heavier precipitation now moving east of downtown Spokane in parts of Spokane Valley heading toward Otis Orchards, uh, also around the Hilliard area, seeing some of that heavier rain. Your Wednesday planner, we are looking at a high temperature of 54 with those spotty showers redeveloping in the afternoon and evening. 57 is our average high. There is some warmer weather in the seven-day forecast. I'll be back with that in just a few minutes. Kirsten? Thank you. Well, two North Idaho libraries are set to partially reopen tomorrow after being closed for months because of damage from January's cold snap. Both the Athol and Post Falls libraries will once again allow people to take out books. And they will also offer one-on-one -on -one staff assistance, internet access, and more. According to the Community Library Network, insurance will cover the cost of repairs caused by the flooding, which was about $700,000 between the two libraries. The organization says insurance will not cover the cost of damaged items. For more information, including the bookmobile and when that will be at the Athol Library, head to kxly.com. Well, the city of Spokane wants your input on public safety. Yeah, this month, you're invited to discuss current issues, concerns, and ways the police and fire departments can improve. The input will be used to determine the hiring process for the next police chief. It will also help the city gauge what is and isn't working for public safety and how to move forward. Those who attend will join small group discussions to share concerns, ideas, and personal stories. 
we spend most of the time hearing from neighborhood uh, neighbors and residents about what's important to them. What are they seeing uh, in their communities? Where would they uh, like us to move? How can we create a community that is, is safe for everyone? And the next public safety meeting is happening right now at the Liberty Park Library. This meeting will run until 7 p.m. For more details, you can head to KXLY.com. Well, the Spokane community is coming together to support moms in need. This Mother's Day, the YWCA is partnering up with the moving company Two Men in a Truck for their annual fundraiser. And for the next few weeks, the companies are collecting essential items for mothers in need. Tune in to Good Morning Northwest tomorrow to learn how you can get involved and make a mom's day. A Mead teenager who showed strength and courage during a battle with a rare form of cancer died this morning. His family sharing the news online. Grant Carroll fought for 10 months against liver cancer. We featured Grant earlier this year when he was able to take the mat one last time. He was diagnosed with cancer last June, just a few days before his 17th birthday. In the time since, he underwent extensive surgeries to remove parts of his liver and more than 100 lymph nodes, but it wasn't enough to rid his body of the cancer. Grant's father announced his death on Facebook, saying his long, hard 10-month battle with cancer was waged with the strength I have never seen before. He was the best, and we will miss him our entire lives. For News Now, we'll be right back. Live stream KXLY Plus on the 4 News Now app. 4 News Now is brought to you by Washington Trust Bank Shred Day. Dan the Piano Man is now Dan the Moving Man, and he would like to thank you for helping with the transition. He now specializes in relocating your most prized possessions from point A to point B with care and efficiency. He's earned the reputation of trust by helping generations of homeowners move their belongings and helping seniors to downsize. He also offers climate-controlled storage, short or long-term, for your possessions. Need your piano moved? Dan can expertly relocate it and provide tuning and repair. Call or click today for a free estimate on your moving job. Dan the Moving Man, serving eastern Washington and north Idaho. Hello, I'm Mark Peterson. It's that time of year again when Washington Trust Bank helps you dispose of your sensitive documents and protect your identity with four easy steps. First, drive to one of their six participating drive through locations. Second, fill your seal and shred bag with the documents that you want to destroy. Third, secure the seal and shred bag. Then drop off your bag at Debris where they will destroy your documents in their secure space. Shred Day is Friday, April 19th. Pick up your shred and seal bag at one of their six locations while supplies last. I'm a little over my head here. We can certainly take care of that for you. When you're looking for a company that's noteworthy, look no further. Call your friends at Mainstream Electric Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing and spend your time doing more important things. Time to grab the broom and sweep out the old. It's spring cleaning time at Wendell Ford. Help us say goodbye to all the remaining 2023 Fords and hello to this year's best deals. The 23 F-150, 1.9% 1 financing for 72 months. The 23 Mach-E, 0% financing for 72 months. The 23 Ford Escape, plug-in hybrid, 0% financing for 66 months. Hurry in today for these spring cleaning deals before they're swept away. Wendell Ford at the Y on North Division. Next ET. Hey, ET. Onset of the Spiderwick Chronicles. Ah! Probably gave people a heart attack there, but it was fun. Okay, let's keep going. Next ET. Watch 4 News Now at 6 and Entertainment Tonight at 7.30. Wednesday, the Connors are back. I'm scared, Daddy. Celebrate a brand new season. Maybe bring over a large bouquet of beers. I'm planning on making a stunning arrangement for my belly. <laughs> the Connors. New Wednesday on ABC. All right, listen up. You got an hour, 17 minutes, and 22 <laughs> seconds to get a free scoop of ice cream at Ben & Jerry's. You can go to River Park Square, or you can go out at Northern Quest. There you go, buddy. I love him. I know he enjoyed that mango one for sure. There you see me and Robin Nance were out scooping from noon to one today at River Park Square. Got to take advantage of free cone day. Yeah. Oh, it's a big deal. And people do line up for it, so... Hopefully not in that hour, and you did all the math. I'm not yeah. doing that online. <laughs> They're also partnered with uh, Cancer Can't, so you can get a free comb, but you can also make a donation to help Cancer yeah. Can't as well. Excellent. Did you have fun today? Of course, always. How much ice cream did you eat compared uh, to how much you scooped? Just one cone. <laughs> oh, okay. I held myself in check. Uh, 
Okay, well, that's <laughs> I, I could not resist. I have to say, and that little boy with the... Mm. Pretty cute. Yes. Uh, well, let's take a look now at our Doppler radar. We do have some rain right around the Spokane area, but mainly it is now to the east of downtown. We're talking right around Hilliard, uh, also heading up around the Trentwood area, some of the heavier rain. Otherwise, it's mostly just sprinkles and will be tapering off here. It's been a cool and breezy day across the inland northwest. 57 is our average high. Today we topped off at 52. That's only part of the story, though. With the showers and the wind, it felt uh, quite a bit cooler. 38 was our morning low, but that is the last time we are going to be above freezing for a few days. Here is a look at our temperature trend over the next few days. 31 degrees tonight. Tomorrow night, 32, Thursday night, and Friday night. This white line is our average high. Uh, so this is why I am like a broken record about waiting till Mother's Day to plant. We have a lot of nights, not just below freezing, but a good hard freeze in Deer Park tonight at 25, 28 degrees in Mead. We'll be in the 20s uh, at Fairchild Air Force Base, Cheney and Spangle, 28 for a morning low in Spirit Lake. Around the region, you'll find temperatures below freezing in many locations, some exceptions, Omac, Grand Coulee, and Moses Lake. Bonners Ferry, 34. I uh, do want to say that anytime you get below 36, if you have it, especially tender plants in the ground, petunias, your pansies, uh, your pretty baskets, you want to take precautions because that can be damaging. Meanwhile, high temperatures tomorrow will be running just a little below average, but without that breeze, uh, it might feel quite a bit warmer. 54 in Spokane, 52 in Coeur d'Alene, still sweatshirt weather, 51 in Pullman and 56 for a high in Ritzville. Here's a look at our forecast radar. Skies will be clearing later tonight. Wait, they're already clearing in many locations. You'll notice some blue coming down from Canada. There is the possibility of a little bit of light snow up along the Canadian border uh, early tomorrow morning. Here's 7 a.m. Uh, for the most part, though, we are staying dry until we get into the afternoon, and we'll start to see that convection going again uh, with the possibility of a few showers through the Spokane and Coeur d'Alene area in the afternoon. May see a little bit of snow trying to mix in in some of the northern valleys, but nothing that is uh, going to accumulate. It's just going to be a little bit crisp. Your planning forecast, only a 20% chance of measurable rain on Wednesday. Then we're drying out, heading closer to the weekend, up to 60 on Saturday, 62 degrees on Sunday. And then our overnight lows will start getting up above freezing starting Saturday night into Sunday morning. Earth Day is Monday, partly cloudy and 66. What a beautiful day. Heading up to 67 on Tuesday. Long range forecasts showing a trend towards slightly above average temperatures. I don't know when we're going to see the 70s again. It may be a while. Hey, but 67 isn't too bad. Thank you, Chris. Mm -hmm. Well, the conference realignment news has been something Washington State fans have dreaded hearing for the past year. Yeah, today there is more news on that front. Coming up in sports, Alex Crescenti tells us where a couple of Cougs teams will be headed to play for at least the next two years. Live stream KXLY Plus on the 4 News Now app. With Fargo, the new virtual assistant from Wells Fargo, you can instantly know what you spend on things like food. Fargo, what did I spend on groceries this month? Hey, Dad, can the guy stay for dinner? No. Want faster, easier banking? You can with Wells Fargo. So what do you think about these? Yeah, we're going to take... From design and products to removal and installation, we handle the entire process to create a beautiful and functional bathroom for whatever your life needs. Rebath, with you every step of the way. Don't relocate, renovate. As your needs change, update your bathroom with aging and accessibility solutions designed to keep the space safe and stylish. Call us or visit rebath.com and save $1,500 off your complete bathroom remodel. Introducing the Chevy family of SUVs. Do more with tech. Do more with safety. Do more with style. 
the Chevy family of SUVs. There's one for everything you do. Get 1.9% financing on select popular Chevy SUVs when you finance with GM Financial. See your hometown Chevy dealer today. Snow melting, birds chirping, it's time to celebrate spring. Now's the best time to visit Jacobs Custom Living. New furniture has arrived for spring, and we really have the largest and most varied inventory ever. Comfortable lounge furniture, elegant outdoor dining sets, umbrellas, and much more. Take it home today if you're ready, or get free storage until May. Special spring clearance pricing on select items throughout the store. Come celebrate spring at Jacobs Custom Living on Sprague, just east of Sullivan. When I was told I had a brain tumor, my life disappeared in a moment. I feared for my future, but even more, I feared for the ones I love. How would they move on without me? But when my doctor told me about the Gamma Knife of Spokane, everything changed. I can get my brain tumor treated in just one day and continue living the life I love. Because of Gamma Knife, I have hope. With Fargo, the new virtual assistant from Wells Fargo, you can pick up the tab even when you forget your wallet. I got this. Fargo, send cash $145 to sell. Smooth. Do you, Fargo? You can with Wells Fargo. 4 News Now is brought to you by Fairway Floor. All right, we're following some breaking news right now. Spokane police say someone shot a dog that was trying to attack a woman. It happened near West College Avenue and North Lindeke Street. Peter Choi is there live now. And Peter, what can you tell us from police? On splits. Yeah, Derek, we're uh, in Link Link the Key and in College Street right now. Police, Spoken police just left the scene as well. Uh, here's what we know so far. The call came in uh, about uh, 5.30 uh, five, this afternoon, and then the, they, the Spoken police say uh, the dog tried to attack uh, a, a, female, a woman and another dog, and a person with a gun shot a dog. Uh, this is a developing story, so we'll continue to update you as more information becomes available. Back to you guys. All right, let's get a check of sports now with Alice Crescenti. This time next year, the state of Washington State Athletics will look very different. With the Pac-12 seemingly no more, the Cougs will settle into temporary housing in various conferences on the West Coast, but who knows how long that's going to last. But today, some more news on where their teams are going to be playing in the future, as both the baseball and women's swimming teams will be affiliate members of the Mountain West Conference for the next two years, beginning on July 1st. They will join the football team who already had an agreement with the Mountain West, but the biggest difference is swimming, swimming and baseball will be eligible for the conference championships and awards. As for the 10 other athletic teams, they will be joining the West Coast Conference. And one of those programs is the men's basketball team, who finally received some good news as Eastern Washington's transfer forward Ethan Price committed to the Cougs this afternoon. Price will reunite with head coach David Riley, who coached him for three years in Cheney. During that time, he put up more than 10 points a game and was named second team All Big Sky this past season. Now, don't be surprised if Price isn't the only former Eagle committing to Washington State within the next few weeks. As for the transfer portal, it giveth and it also taketh. This afternoon, former Cougar center Oscar Clough announced his commitment to South Dakota State. In his one season in Pullman, Clough played in all 35 games and started 23 of those as he had a huge role in the front court for the Cougs. He averaged seven points and four and a half rebounds a game to go along with his 31 blocks throughout the season with Clough becoming a jackrabbit and Miles Rice committed to Indiana over the weekend. There are still a number of Washington State players still in the portal, so maybe an outside chance that they do return to Pullman. And the Seattle Mariners are going for their first series win of the season. We're almost three weeks into the season, but that's okay. They'll have a chance tonight to get that win against the Cincinnati Reds just getting underway over at T-Mobile Park. Now, as for the Spokane Indians, they are back in town this evening as they are off to their best start in franchise history, sitting at 8-1 and one and starting a series with Everett tonight. We're going to have the highlights coming up on Nightside. Reporting in studio, I'm Alex Crescenti. 4 News Now Sports. Well, the city of Spokane is joining a lawsuit against the manufacturers responsible for PFAS, also known as Forever Chemicals. The lawsuit lists 11 causes of action, like product liability and negligence, against multiple companies, including 3M and DuPont. 
According to the city, it tested for PFAS in 2023 and found two wells contaminated with low levels at the Ray Street and Grace wells. The city says while the levels were below state standards, one well exceeded new federal standards the EPA announced last week. Mayor Lisa Brown writing, protecting the health and safety of Spokane's residents is our top priority. By taking legal action against these manufacturers, we are holding accountable those responsible for polluting our drinking water. And here's a look at ABC's prime time lineup tonight. Live stream KXLY Plus on the 4 News Now app. Was this woman turned down for her dream job because she didn't wear makeup? Next in Sun Edition. She says she had all the qualifications, except one. She didn't wear makeup at her job interview. You're just not a big makeup girl. Then, <laughs> raccoons and dumpsters. Make yourself at home, but how do you get them out? Let's go, I'm gonna get you out. Watch the next Inside Edition. Watch 4 News now at 6 and Inside Edition at 7. Hi, I need new tires. Perfect timing. Right now, during our tire savings event, when you buy three tires, you get the fourth for only a dollar. Wow, that's a great deal. Right? Can you imagine finding a tire for less? Sorry, honey. Mama needs this tire. No. Definitely not. No. Let's get you those tires. Okay. Right now, during our tire savings event, buy three tires and get the fourth for only a dollar. Toyota Service Centers. Keep your Toyota a Toyota. With local utility rebates and massive tax credits available, it's now possible to upgrade to a heat pump for less than a traditional air conditioner. Heat pumps are far more efficient than air conditioners when it comes to heating and cooling your home. Get year-round comfort with higher efficiency, all while lowering your monthly utility bills. So don't be fooled into buying outdated air conditioning technology. Upgrade to a heat pump. The smart choice for smart homeowners. Call Bill's Heating and AC today for your free estimate. Can I help you? Yeah, my car was dirty. I was just going to clean my window. Sure, but that'll be a dollar. To use the squeegee? Yep. Ridiculous, right? You know what else doesn't make sense? Some people are still paying for their checking accounts. Some places it's 12 bucks a month. At P1FCU, we believe some things should just be free. Like our Ascend checking, where you can earn 3.5% in dividends. Open your account at p1fcu.org slash free. Do you need a paradise getaway? Mr. Quack Casino Hotel has what you need. Two winners will receive a share of just over $10,000 cash, two nights in a cabin, and a two-day pontoon rental at Two Rivers Resort, located at the confluence of the Spokane and Columbia Rivers. Earn entries by playing your favorite games at Mr. Quack Casino Hotel. The more you play, the more chances you earn to win. Learn more at MrQua.com. 4 News Now is brought to you by Finley Downtown Toyota. Coming up tonight on Nightside, parents are fighting to save Bora Elementary in Coeur d'Alene. Why the school district is considering shutting it down tonight at 11. We do still have some showers rotating through the region, but they're beginning to taper off and right in Spokane. Uh, it's dry at the station, uh, but we have some showers in Spokane Valley still in progress and may see some again tomorrow afternoon and evening. A cold morning, 31 degrees. Ooh. Yeah, uh, it has been chilly in the mornings for sure. Yes. All right, Chris, thank you so much. And we will see you tonight at 11. Now I'm just thinking about walking my dog in that, that temperature. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Sorry, Rory. Aww. I know. He's going to have to run around the backyard in a bunch of circles. <laughs> see ya. Have a good night.